Basically just a sedge hog and uh, tied on a cub hook. Now the hopper versions are extremely popular. I'll show you the ones that I well, these are these are four the early season ones that I have to I, the top one here, this one here is the kind of clan chief, it's a mix of red and black. And then the one I'm going to be tying is this one here, just the standard one at the beginning of the season, black, pearl rib. Pair of the ribs it has got a holographic underneath it. Same same rib but olive. Which is a great pattern. And again, times when the lights are for the rainbows times they like the the chartreuse in black, which again is a, a great pattern to tie. Now the hook I like to use is a filling mill super grub. In this case it's a size ten. You tie these right down, tie them as small, or even a size bigger if you wish. But it's size 10 down anyway. Thread I'm using is a uni black, an 8 0. And all I'm going to do is run the thread down, stop it, line with the point of the hook, and then bring the thread back up, and stop it maybe about a mil, mil and a half from the eye. Now I've got some belly uh, deer here, dyed black. It's from the belly area, it's, just, it's uh, most hollow, it's got a really Fibers are hollow and uh, much better for this type of fly. Now I'm going to stack it. Just put it in tip first into the stacker. Tap it on your desk and that should line up tips, points. Then remove it. Now the length of the hair you're looking for at least the length of the hook from the eye to the back tied forward. This is the style that I tied when I was a fishery manager many years ago in the early 90s and it was a quick way to actually tie a sedge hog and the basic size we used to was size sort of like well it was equivalent to a 16 but it was a B160 size 16 just tied the deer here forward pulled it back, had the white gate and then you put the legs on it so easy to tie quick. That was the idea behind it. Now I've got a medium pearl tinsel and this is the uni one, number 14. Let's catch that on the side and catch it on the way down. And then we've got the vineyard one. This is a vineyard red holographic in medium. It's a proper red. They do a small, medium and a large. And the smaller sizes you obviously got to change to the small tinsel. But in this size, the medium is perfect. As you see, I'm catching these in the way round. Put the pedal on first, and then the red on top. Then get yourself some black dubbing. Could be seals fire or synthetic, whatever you like to use. Just dub it onto your thread. Now I'm going to form a shape, but I'm not going to be too tight with the dubbing. And work my way up. A bit more. And there's a tapered shape there. Thin it first. A wee bit heavier as you go up. I'm not putting it on tight, meaning I'm not screwing or twisting the thread, the, the dubbing so tight that it nothing penetrate it or do anything to it. Meaning when I wind the rib up through, I want it to sink into the dubbing and touch the hook mainly, so that there's less room for the fish, the fish's teeth to get in behind the uh, the rib and tear it off. Uh, your fly will last much longer if you do that. Now I'm going to wind both together. Now the pearls on top and the red underneath. Just wind it up. And this is, don't mind if a tiny bit of the red shows through at the bottom or even at the top. Tie it down. Now if you're looking for a good buzzer body, just change the, well, the thorax area, just make it into a buzzer. That's the rib you want. It's a great rib. You could protect it by fine wire if you feel it's not lasting too long. But I don't mind it like that. It lasts long enough. As long as you don't use your forceps on the fly when removing the fly from the fish's mouth. 
They fly out last that long. Now, Velcro this the fur out in between the rib turns. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but see how the colour just changes up. I mean, it's excellent for flies, I mean, especially the beginning of the season and onwards. I mean, it'll catch all the way right through the whole season, died in different sizes. But that's the body to have, that's the body you're looking for. Then, tiny bit more dubbing onto your thread. Slide it up. Want to start, and then this is the time method I developed more than anything was to pull back, push, pull back these fibers as you work your way up. Come to the very last one, just to get the dubbing in front. That's really all we need to do. And then you bring the fur up into the, the hair, into the, the deer hair. This is a light, this is more a subsurface fly, if you want it heavier, you can make it heavier if you want, but the, this style is much lighter than normal. Once you're finished with that, now you get, you can either mix it, the, this is pre, pre knotted pheasant tail fibres, which should save you a lot of time. You get, I've got red here and I've got black, you can mix them, or have them just black, just in, Dial up to your cell. Now I'm going to use four of the red and four black. Just bring them 90 degrees from the stem to the feather. This will line the ends up for you. Now what I'm going to do is just mix these fibres, just line them up. And you want them obviously an even split, two red, two black, either side. You can be a bit stubborn sometimes, but it's flying dying for you. Get them down either side of the wing. You can put them on individually if you want. Length you would like. Now I'm keeping within the international rules, which is 15 sixteenths of an inch, the full length of the fly. Now that, just take it, if you imagine the body of a shank length, just by. And then remove the excess of the waist ends of the pheasant tail fibres. Tidy up. Tiny bit of wax on. Now you get some, just to highlight it, now you could use black just to finish it off, you want it darker or you want it a wee bit more visible use some white deer here you don't need a lot this is like a bi-visible as they used to call it you always put a white hackle in front just to give it the extra highlight and this will give the impression basically either the midge which can be whitish the wings so lots of things it could do Wing length just to the back of the fly. Do a couple of turns. In that case, three turns. You lift two or three of the fibres. Come in with a couple of turns to lock them in. Again, lift them up. And again, and build up your head. Keeping hold of the thread nice and tight. So you got what wax on there just to make it sticky. And then about finish. And there we are. Right, take that away. And then bring the cut ends away from the fly. Cut it at a slight angle. Let's check, but just cut ends. Cut it as in like an angle, maybe two mil or so from the eye. And then trim. That just gives a wee bit more disturbance. This is more a subsurface fly. It's fly more for a, just in the surface form. You can gink it up, or in my case I like to use muslin, I don't like gink. Get it close to the surface. Depending on what you're using. It's a medium wire hook, the super grub, so it'll sit nice for you. Then all we have to do is come in with some varnish. 
all the way around. Too much on, come in with your needle, take the excess away, clean the eye out, and there you are. And that there is your whole copper. Now the colour of the body, if you just twist, you see it changes. And suits the light. That's perfect, that's what you're looking for. Makes for a great fly. Because the olive, it's the same body, it's the same rib, it's on the olive one, sorry. You can see how it just changes as well. Uh, the other two, red and yellow holographic, and this one. One of just tied, the olive, as I said, just change the colour to suit. Same rib on that one. On this one here, chartreuse and the pearl. Holographic, the chartreuse, uh, holographic. Then uh, the chartreuse, D here in front. Change your thread colour to the chartreuse. And then there's the oranges and the naturals, which go on and on. We've got here's the ear version, which is a great pattern as well. Anyway, that's your black, the black and red, whole copper. Hope you enjoyed that. This is fly certainly worth a place in anyone's fly box. Mm -hmm.